Hi friends, today we are going to talk talk about the different aspects of your job as a tech ops engineer. There are different types of work that you'll have to do. There are multiple aspects of being a tech ops engineer. In this uh, session, we are going to cover what are the different aspects of being a tech ops engineer. And uh, for this, we are going to consider the type of work, best practices, roles and responsibilities and challenges in this video. So let's start with the type of work first. So uh, among the type of work that you're going to be doing as tech ops, a uh, few of the types are you'll be checking the logs and uh, you'll be finding the different uh, ways in which an application is failing. You'll be uh, able to find why that application is failing and what its impact can be. Besides that, you will be providing technical support on the tickets from the CST. For example, if any user raises concern to a CST team, then CST team handles the first level of support and uh, they are going to route that query to different uh, internal tech teams. And uh, when whenever a query lands to a particular tech team's email or ticketing system like Jira, right, or anything, then TechOps provide the first layer of support uh, in which they will be triaging or basically evaluating the type of ticket that is, what is the issue that user is facing, is there an, is this any new issue that has been brought up or is it an old issue or is it a configuration issue, they are going to be evaluating the ticket upon, upon many parameters and then they are going to take action. Besides that, uh, as I've already told you that they, are, they have to understand the issue that a user is facing. They have to understand what that user is facing, how that user is facing. Also with that, they have to evaluate whether that particular issue corresponds to their tech team or not. If it doesn't correspond to uh, his particular tech team, his or her particular tech team, he has to route those queries to respective, uh, respective vertical or respective tech teams. Uh, so uh, let's move on. Let's move on uh, to the roles and responsibilities. What's your role responsibility is going to be like when you're working as a tech ops engineer? So uh, first of all, you will be uh, providing support for ad hoc query and uh, configuration changes. For example, if any team wants to uh, make ad hoc queries to your database, if, if business intelligence teams, business analytics teams, data analytics teams, they want to understand the data that is stored in your databases, then you will be providing support to them in the form of uh, providing firsthand how the schema is arranged in the databases. And if possible, you will be providing them uh, queries of uh, 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 queries upon your team's database. You can uh, you will also be required to change configurations which are saved in databases so that if uh, there are any configurations upon which your team is dependent, then you will be asked to change those configuration as per the product or business team's requirement. Besides that, you will be working on the emails that are being raised to your tech team's email ID or any issue that is raised to a particular tech team. Its first level of support is provided by the tech ops engineers. They have to evaluate and they have to uh, execute whatever that uh, issue is being reported. Besides that, they will have to monitor, not monitor all the alerts, but they have to provide support on the alerts that are being raised in the system. There is a specific, uh, in most companies, there is an on-call policy in which all the engineers of the team go on call. Uh, on call is basically a term in which engineers have to look after a per, uh, particular issue that are being reported in their systems and on call is generally uh, for a short amount of time and uh, it is assigned on call duty is assigned to all the engineers on a rotation basis so that uh, every engineer stays on call for one to two weeks besides that you will be uh, making dashboards for the system for example all the monitoring and the metrics that are uh, being passed in your monitoring system, you will be responsible to make dashboards, not individually, but as a team member, since you're part of the team, since you're part of the technical team, you will be responsible for making dashboards along with other developers, testers, and it is it is collective responsibility of the team. So it is one of the things that you can look forward to, to make dashboards, to make operational metrics. Besides that, 
the uh, most basic thing that you will be required to do is check the logs from multiple sources for example if there is a central logging system then you'll be checking the logs from there if there is a central open tracing system or uh, tracing system you'll be checking logs uh, from there so you will have to check logs uh, from all the systems you will have to deduce you will have to use your brain uh, to find out how a particular issue is happening you will have to uh, debug what a particular issue is and how is it happening if you are able to fix that issue that is very well and good if you're not able to uh, fix that issue then you'll have to raise a corresponding jira to the product managers or the tech team so uh, that not tech team you're part of the tech team since you are the tech team so you'll be raising it uh, to your uh, other uh, team members so that they can fix it now let's move on to the best practices uh, for best practices uh, one of the main requirement uh, for best practices you will be making your documents you will be making documents to make your life easier it's not just for other people's uh, sake you will be making documents so that your life is easier let me tell you how your life is going to get easier when you make documents so as a tech ops engineer as an engineer you are going to face a lot of issues uh, in your systems and uh, some of the issues or many of the issues are going to be recurring ones till the time they're not fixed because it all it is all about priority of the issues there are some high priority issues and there are some low priority issues along with the business tasks tasks that are being assigned to the team so not all things are fixed at once there are some uh, low priority issues which may not be fixed for some time so they become recurring issues in your parlance so you will uh, what is the best practice is you can make a doc regarding why a particular issue is recurring again and again what are its resolution steps uh, how you can basically resolve that particular issue and uh, how you can basically mitigate it from happening in the future besides that you can also raise a jira ticket or an issue in the issue tracking system uh, whatever issue tracking system your company is using you can raise a ticket in that issue tracking system specifying all the details of this corresponding issue how much bandwidth teams bandwidth is going in resolving these issues for example sometimes there are uh, cases in which uh, fixing uh, that issue can take a very less amount of time but since a since it's a low priority issue it can stay open uh, for a long time and these type of issues when they occur they take a lot of bandwidth in terms of debugging and in terms of resolving those issues so being a low priority issue and taking uh, a lot of bandwidth makes it a good case to fix them first so you can raise a jira supporting your arguments why it needs to be fixed first so that you can open up your team's bandwidth if you're in charge of a particular tech ops team then you can open your team's bandwidth to other resolutions Besides that, you will be documenting what are the frequently used ad hoc commands, what are the different type of runbooks. What is a runbook? Runbook is basically a sequence of steps you have to follow in a certain situation. So, for example, if you uh, say that uh, a user is per uh, facing a particular login issue, then what can be a runbook for that? You will write down all these steps that a person looking into that login issue will have to check from the tech team side you will be specifying uh, first of all that go to this uh, central logging system find out logs for that user try to find out what error that user is facing uh, are other users also facing this issue and this type you have to find a uh, for example first of all you will have to debug it one time then if that issue uh, keeps on repeating then you can write down uh, a run book uh, it is similar to the recurring issue it is similar to the recurring issue that we had talked uh, but uh, you will have to write down commands as well for example for example if a particular user has to check whether a, log, uh, ish, a user is fixing a login issue then he can grip the uh, user id in the logs so what is the command for gripping those user id that you can specify if any if there are any other commands ad hoc commands that you have to run then also you can specify and if possible you can also make scripts i'll be covering that uh, this in the next segment but uh, besides that you can make dashboards and runbooks for example uh, to monitor your system well to have lesser number of production issues what you have to do is you have to ensure that your system is performing well and good every time 
so you will have to make sure that you have enough dashboards and and alerts on your system so that if any issue occurs it is notified in uh, due time before anything bad happens so you'll be making dashboards and you'll be making run books for uh, frequently faced issues and frequently faced configuration changes so that each and every time you receive an email or a ticket you don't have to write that particular answer or particular reply every time you have a run book for that for example uh, onboarding a product user so if you had a run book for that you can uh, specify that run book you can give that run book uh, to the new user specifying him all the details uh, that he should provide to you in a particular format then you uh, when you have all the uh, details you can uh, use those details to create those product users so you have to find your recurring task uh, recurring information that you're providing to other teams other team members then you can document those pieces of information you can document those canned replies these are called canned replies replies that you are uh, sending again and again to different users in same scenario facing the, the same scenario so you can have canned replies uh, or run books uh, demanding the details that you want to debug that issue and uh, you can share them with the uh, person raising the issue so that you don't have to reply the same text again and again you don't have to type the same text again and again so that uh, that is about the dashboard and run books besides that uh, for best practices you can make scripts uh, that's why having knowledge of scripting system is very important uh, being a tech ops you will have to run ad hoc commands and again and again and if the scenarios keep repeating then having automated scripts with collection of all the ad hoc commands and is in a single place and if you have an automated script you can basically debug an issue faster you can uh, basically issue the commands faster ra rather than writing th those uh, commands again and again and if uh, there is so that was about the repeated work that you're facing you can um, write scripts for that besides that you will have to raise jira for system bugs and system improvements for so since you are single handedly your team is single handedly your tech ops team is single handedly facing the issues or resolving the issues you will have better understanding in terms of system issues so and system improvement scope for example you will find cases in which adding a button on the uh, seller panel or any panel which a user is using can improve the number of tickets being raised to the tech teams if you have identified if you can identify those scenarios if you can identify the improvement scopes in your system that can reduce the workload for the tech ops it can reduce workload for the end users by not uh, by giving them a smooth flow so you will be raising uh, jira or issue uh, uh, issues in your issue tracking system for system bugs and system improvement besides that let's see what are the different challenges that uh, a tech ops uh, team can face since you are first point of contact for other teams that means you will be uh, triaging uh, what is triaging triaging is basically evaluating a particular bug or an issue based to you so you will be first point of contact for triaging any issue that has been raised to your team so that is a lot of work besides that you will have to check a lot of issues since if uh, end users won't have context of uh, which specific team should check a particular issue end users don't have that context they are going to raise it to general teams for example if last time some issue was resolved by your team then they are going to blindly add you in that email and let you decide whether this uh, issue corresponds to your team's functionality or not so rather than just not replying what you have to do is you have to try it first hand having a technical knowledge you will uh, understand that this issue belongs to a particular system and you will have to add those systems engineers to look into that issue so that is how you will be handling a lot of issues though they are not your team's issues but you will have to redirect them to their corresponding owners besides that since you will be debugging a lot of flows user flows as well as system flows so you will have to understand what are the different business logics 
on which your team is functioning on you will have to understand then you will have to understand how the system is working how the code flow is working so that whenever an issue comes in a particular code flow you can understand how this issue might be manifesting in your system for example uh, if a particular api is giving 586 then having knowledge of what all components does this api have what all uh, users or what all uh, server uh, services are calling your team's api so that giving uh, whenever you're giving 586 what you can evaluate what is the priority of the issue so having uh, understanding of business logic and code flows is going to make your life very easier as a tech ops so that is all i can think of at the moment uh, of your as your responsibilities being a tech ops engineer in any respectable organization there are going to be more and more roles assigned to you you will obviously have to have uh, people management skills so that whenever you are interacting with anyone raising an issue to your team you are sympathetic uh, that uh, yes their queries will be resolved uh, and as well you will have to manage your priorities well so that high priority issues are resolved first and uh, then you will you will be able to handle low priority issues so that is also required prioritization of task is also required you will have to manage uh, in uh, senior positions uh, you will have to manage a lot of engineers uh, tech ops engineers and uh, people management skills are also required which is a topic of another discussion altogether so that is all i can think of as responsibilities for a tech ops engineer uh, thank you everyone uh, have a nice day please let me know if you have any queries or comments uh, i'll be uh, most happy to answer them have a nice day